Welcome back to Extra Shot. We're still live, just about end of day one, nearly the end of day one, uh, live from Windsor, of course, for the DSB Leaders World Forum, where I'm delighted to be joined by Chris Lewis, Managing Director at Lewis Insight, and Martin Warwick, who's co-founder and editor-in-chief of Telecom TV. Welcome to you both. Many rich discussions happened here today. We've talked about how to drive growth in the uh, telco sector, AI and network automation, cloud native teams, how to create them or encourage them. Not that easy based on the conversations I've heard and building infrastructure, digital infrastructure from core to edge. So Martin says we've heard from Chris already, who's graced this stage, if I can call it a stage, uh, earlier today. Uh, we've seen you on stage actually earlier. Yes. We haven't heard from you yet. So no. I was wondering if you could share your key takeaways of the uh, sessions we've heard here on day one. Yes, of the forum. okay then. Well, to begin with, I think it was a particularly good day, not least because of the balance between the number of telcos here and the number of vendors and other interested parties are very close, 50-50. So we didn't hear a lot of sort of pitches, as it were, from vendors. We heard questions to and from telcos talking about what they want and what they need, and vendors responding and saying, yeah, this is how it might be done. I think that's very important, very unusual to be able to get that kind of balance. From my point of view, as a journalist, the thing that interests me most were the first two sessions this morning. Innovation, which is all, they've been banging that drum since Noah was a boy. Um, and also the AI, which I'm particularly exercised about because it gets a bad press. So those are the two things that interested me the most. This afternoon, on a personal level, a little less so, but very important nonetheless. But not my bag particularly. Okay, Chris. Well, I, I'm going to take it straight to the end of the day then, because I thought the the last session on infrastructure and getting this, getting the infrastructure out to the edge, absolutely summarises the challenge the industry has, which is that we have been a very centralised industry, and we've tried to dictate the way things are done and the way products are developed for the customers. And actually, by the emphasis moving towards the edge, it, it emphasises the fact that what is required at the edge is not just connectivity but security, analytics, all the things that go to make up the services, the digital services in the DSP yeah. that we all need. And that's a big shift for the, from an investment point of view, from a management point of view, from an operations point of view. And I think that fundamentally is the, is the change in direction that the telco industry has, has got to embrace because, and AI will contribute to that by the way, I don't think it's a totally bad press. I think it's just, a, it's been overhyped. And I think it's, it's talked about in too many areas rather than the practical application of, of AI. And I think innovation similarly, that you know, telcos can't do it all. They're, not, they're no longer their own ecosystem. They're part of a broader ecosystem. And therefore innovation will come in from other parties, um, whether it's from the, the people designing the chips or the people even delivering the security and platforms. In fact, one interesting thing that did, did occur to me during the last session, Charlotte, was that the the way in which the, the, the other parties in the ecosystem, so the people building their own platforms, whether it's a Salesforce or a Cisco mm. uh, or, or, or many others, you know, the, it's about telcos adapting their way of, of behaving to embrace those things rather than try and compete with them. And I think previously they've tried to compete and tried to control. Mm. And I think that move to the edge sort of democratizes telecoms a lot and, and hopefully will get it thinking a bit more broadly about its role in that broader ecosystem. So it's empowering. Martin, I just want to go back to what you just mentioned actually around innovation. Mm. Uh, the industry was at the forefront of innovation for many decades until obviously tech uh, companies started to um, come up with new solutions, new products, etc. But what we've seen today is lots of discussions around the convergence of many different uh, technologies. And since Chris also mentioned mindset, it seems that what's important is to work on the, on the culture and, and create that, that the right environment for innovation to thrive. So how do you go about that? Well, I think uh, Neil McRae hit, hit it on the head really by saying, you know, these were, it wasn't Neil, it's, sorry, whoever sat next to Neil, who said these were all in the past sort of monolithic state-owned enterprises. And that has still to this day prevails, a mindset can prevail in many of these organizations of telcos that is a reflection and 
from the ancestry that they came from. And that's something that's been very, very difficult to shift. Tried very hard in many ways, and it's succeeding. But it's succeeding more slowly than might have been anticipated, considering that BT, for example, was, was privatized back in 1984. So, you know, are looking at 40 years, and it's taking a long time. That, that was the year I came into the industry, by the way, 1984. Was it? Yeah, just 40 years. But I think it's, there's a big, and it's the geopolitical point is really important because the Chinese and co have taken a market and restructured it to, to do the best for delivering 5G and fiber. Mm. The Americans have got sheer scale and they're with their major players. Mm. They've done it through the, through the capital market, if you like. And Europe's sort of been caught somewhere in, in between the two by regulation trying to control it or, or guide it a little bit, but actually it's stifled it. Too much competition. And in fact, the point made by, I think Francesca and co at the end there, about actually we need to have some more form of sharing between the participants, because we shouldn't all be building separate networks. I know the vendors might not like that, because they, they obviously can sell to separate people, but actually the, the, the ultimate economics of this industry will end up with much more sharing. I don't think it'll go back to the monopoly that we had pre-84, but I think we will get a lot more sharing, a lot more a lot more structure in the market. Yeah. But the sovereignty issue is an important one, important consideration indeed. Now, in terms of the challenges faced by the sector, we know that there are plenty of them indeed. And last year, I remember lots of conversations around skills. We talked about them, um, obviously, during the sessions we've had today, but maybe not as much as last year, I'd say. Uh, why do you think that is? And also, I mean, surely, I mean, skills, upskilling and finding the right skills and attracting new talent, um, is a big challenge for the industry. It is, and it's it's in, it, I'm not sure about increasingly so, but still, still so, because to recruit people or to have people in your organisation that can you you can reskill, you can see where the talent is to be able to do that. It's quite a long term process. You have to know what what's going on. They have to understand it. Then they have to be trained and educated to reach that point, and it takes a while. And as in most of these things, you can't turn it around in twelve months. No, and I think that point was made in one of this morning's discussions that actually it's more important, the, the long-term goal, and let's face it, most telecoms investment is long-term. Mm. We get sucked into the quarter-by-quarter quarter discussion, and that's just not really appropriate for our industry. But the long-term is actually getting the education systems right in countries. So, uh, so kids coming through school actually want to get involved in this stuff. They find it interesting to be involved in coding, to be involved in developing digital services. And I think that's one of the long-term uh, pushes. The other point I'd like to, to touch upon, Charles, is that in all of the discussion that we have, and this, this is the way this industry tends to deal with it, I didn't hear very much about the actual changing product that we deliver to the customers. Now, I know we've got a session at the end of play tomorrow, which would, which would be a nice way of wrapping it up. But all the way through, as we move all these pieces around from the center to the edge and distributed and so on and disaggregated, does it change the product that you and I use, Martin? Or huh. that a business users. Very good point indeed. I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure it does. So I'm very interested in tomorrow's session and seeing how we might think about really shifting the emphasis to the customer rather than the tokenism, let's say, of, of customer experience in the past. You came into this in, back in '84. I came in in '91. What, what about the, the emphasis on the customer then? It was and surely it was the same. We, we, we deliver this. We the customer is central to everything we do. It certainly became more and more of that in recent it years. Was, it was a dictatorship. Right? It, was. Know, it was a dictatorship. <laughs> it was. You and, will do this. We will buy it, a switch. And, you will do this. Well, no. I mean, no. And no, I'm thinking about the end product. Oh, so I the, see. The yeah. end product oh, was completely. Very much, you know, and, it, completely, and you paid yeah. by distance, and you paid, yeah. we used to have a lock on the t on the dial on the yeah, telephone. I remember those. Calling long distance. Yeah. So. I mean, so much has changed, but I think, but, but we haven't really shifted over to the emphasis being on the customer yeah. and what the customer is doing. And, and it was, I think Nick Willits mentioned the, this notion of shifting from an inside out model where it is defined by the technology to an outside in one, where it's defined by what, what people and customers and businesses and society are doing with the technology and with, with the service. And that's where we've got to get to. And that, that will redimension the whole industry and change, and change the way we think of telcos and IT companies and the digital service providers. I agree. The question is, but when? <laughs> well, Martin, if I was a if I was a, a an analyst forecasting that sort of thing, then oh yes, I am. Um, <laughs> Precisely. It's a, it's it's such a long term business, and I think we, we touched upon it this morning in some of the geopolitical discussion that you know the the, the global players, the hyperscalers, the equipment players, they they have the, the global capacity, they have the capex, they have the ability to. to, to lock jobs off as well as create new jobs all the time. And the problem with telcos is that ultimately they are tied down to a national footprint. Yeah, admittedly, sometimes with, with multiple national footprints. 
which has some relevance to, to government activity. And I think the government did come up on a couple of occasions thinking about how, how government should be responsible. And I just think, you know, this is, this is at least a 10 year journey. It's, it's not a five year journey, it's at least a 10 year journey. Okay, I'd like to wrap up and uh, conclude our conversation on a high note, if possible. Have you heard anything particularly exciting today? Any exciting developments that uh, you'd like to share with our audience? I, you know, I think what I, what I did like about the discussions is that it's it's much more practical. And I, I, as an analyst, we get presented with so many you know new technologies, new pictures, and people trying to make you excited about it. I think what you heard from, from all the telcos on stage today was a much more pragmatic view as to where their investment is, where they're going, and not and not getting too overly excited because I don't I don't think the end product changes that much and I think accepting the relative role of the telco in that broader ecosystem is really important some and I think we had we had a discussion about some pockets of innovation some pockets of, uh, of, of, of really pushing out into other markets are happening but it's very much contextualized within individual telcos in individual countries so I think summarizing on a global level is is, is dangerous I think that's why we often get quite down about the state of the market because there's no no major growth but we are seeing movement in shifts in the investment cycle shifts in the in the way the investment community looks at telecoms this stratification looking at towers and infrastructure and i think we are seeing a much more practical view of the way telcos will evolve into whatever we call it in the future the okay. xsp i think rather than the DSP. So, so excited about the fact that we are more realistic <laughs> well, about, absolutely about more really nothing earth shattering in, as far as innovation is concerned, but a steady progress, I think. I mean, 5G's been around for five years now, uh, still not where it should be, except perhaps in some private network. 6G has been hyped so much in the past year, and the, the hype cycle can't get much higher. It'll it'll disappear to, you know, around the moon summer. It's just crazy. And well, so that needs, to, that needs to calm down, and we're seeing it calm down, I hope and think. But it's, it is an incremental process, and as Chris says, what we're talking about with this industry has always been 10 years, 15 years, always, to, to make these major Long changes. Long cycles. Yeah. And, and one, one last comment, if I may, Charlotte. The, the, way the, the way the stock market, the way the financial, the investment community look at telecoms, they considered it a commodity stock mm -hmm. 20 years ago. So we've kept on this myth that it's this fast-growing, changing industry. I was actually, once again, I'll re-emphasize the point. So yes, NVIDIA and co change things quickly. You know, the Cisco's in this world, the Rackets in this world, they all change things quickly. But actually the fundamental telecom industry does not change that dramatically. And even settling down towards that fixed and mobile convergence that we talked about, how many years ago, Martin? Oh, God. Yeah, 20, a long 30, time. At least 20, 30 years yeah. ago. You know, so I think it, it is a more, it's a more measured approach, a more sensible approach. And that's what you see, obviously the stock market, d don't get overexcited because there isn't anything to be overexcited about in terms of growth but it will keep on delivering, keep on supporting. In fact, in a recent piece I wrote, thinking about 40 years in telecoms, I said that tel telcos always want to be the, the superstars, you know, the, 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 the stars in the film. Actually, they're a supporting actor. They're playing a supporting role, supporting this, this new adventure, this new film that's being created, the new content that's being created. But it's a supporting role. It's not, it's not the glitz and glamour. It's not the limelight role that they might have thought they had in the past. Okay. Well, thanks to both of you for your insights. Hopefully we'll talk to you tomorrow. Um, there's more to come here from the uh, DSP Leaders World Forum, live from Windsor, of course. Um, join us again from 9 a.m. UK time, of course. Uh, we'll have more co-hosts, more CSP-led discussions, and, of course, more extra shots. So don't miss it. See you tomorrow. <laughs>